I want to bring in jo John Diaz. He's a reporter with CBSN New York, and he's covering this story for us at the fire scene in the Bronx. So, John, listen, what is happening right now there? Good morning, both of you. Yeah, well, just a lot of sorrow and anguish happening out here in the Bronx. Uh, you know, people coming by uh, just a little while ago, a lot of families walking their kids to schools, kind of, you know, guarding their eyes from the scene here because there's still plenty of caution tape up. And FDNY has the whole area blocked off uh, to vehicular traffic. Uh, not really a lot of people drive by here or even really even walk by unless you have to. Right now, uh, this sole, you know, this the center of their investigation, if you will, right now is that fireproof door that you hear us continue uh, to talk about. Why exactly did it not shut behind them? Uh, that is a city law for all these front doors to be fireproof doors and close behind them to prevent things like this from happening, you know, to contain a fire into that one unit to stop the smoke uh, from going out through, um, throughout the entire building. So right now they are looking to see why. Why did that door not close uh, behind them? John, what are you learning now about the victims and the people who lived in the building? Uh, well, FDNY is still remaining um, pretty tight-lipped about the, the names and the exact ages of everyone that lived in the building here that uh, tragically lost their life. What we can tell you right now is uh, 19 people died, nine of them children, um, and the mayor not too long ago was saying, unfortunately, uh, it is likely, or he does expect, rather, that uh, for that number to go up. But what we can tell you, though, is that uh, the mayor and the governor are both saying that a lot of these people are immigrants. They're from the West African nation called the Gambia and Governor Kathy Hochul yesterday uh, saying that, you know, they immigrated here to America, specifically here to the Bronx uh, for a better life, saying that they are part of our family and her thoughts and her prayers go out to everyone here in this community, really just heart stricken over this entire thing. John, you mentioned the fire doors, which would sort of shut behind you uh, when people leave. Um, the fire really was just contained to a couple of floors, but the smoke was not. Can you talk about, you know, the impact that the door being left open could have had, the way in which it could have made the situation worse? Yeah, so... Right now, according to the mayor and governor, um, the, everyone who lost their lives appears they were not burned or anything like that. They actually uh, died due to a smoke inhalation or that's, you know, the, the toxic smoke coming from that fire. Those actual flames itself kind of stayed inside that one apartment. But that door being left open, that is what caused all that toxic smoke to just billow out into the hallways and head on up. This is a big building and it really reached a lot of units, all that different smoke. And the FDNY now, uh, they been telling everyone and uh, tweeting out they've been urging everyone to close the doors when escaping a fire you know reminding everyone to do that and uh, the mayor actually saying that he's going to double down on PSAs in schools and also senior centers really anywhere and everywhere reminding everyone to close that doors because again this is a lesson that they learned here uh, today that you always should close that door behind you again they're supposed to close on their own uh, that is according to laws here in uh, the city of New York. You're supposed to have those self-closing doors here in these buildings, but if they don't close, you're really supposed to try and pull those doors shut to contain uh, that fire to that one unit to try and stop the smoke from billowing out. Yeah, John, and, you know, the news that you reported and others at CBSN New York uh, was that the blaze was pr uh, potentially sparked by a malfunctioning electric space heater. Um, and I know that uh, the city has had tips, has tips for people who are using these space heaters. It's going to be bitterly cold over the next couple of days. What are you learning? Well, yeah, they're saying, you know, you could use them, but just use the most updated ones. Don't use any of those old space heaters. And also, uh, something you have to keep in mind is the um, electric cords, you know, the uh, ex uh, extension cords. Make sure that those are up to speed as well, up to date as well, because that's where things can spark. Also, make sure if you do have them, make sure you have those uh, those ones that go off on their own as well, those self-timers, uh, because sometimes people fall asleep, they leave them on, uh, especially if there's a blanket close by or something like that that they really are extremely um, fired, really hazardous. And this is kind of what happens. So you have to keep on top of things like that. Um, so obviously people are not going to be able to get into their apartments anytime soon. What's the city, what's the state doing for the families that are displaced? Well, they have set up uh, numerous different emergency um, 
places for them to go to. Right now, they are taking donations, but uh, due to COVID, though, people, you know, a lot of people stopping by with blankets and different stuff like that, uh, but they are not unable to accept them right now. So they are asking everyone, if you do want to donate, just donate cash. The mayor has set up a fund, uh, and then we have more information over on our website as well where you can donate to, but sh cash, that's what, they, that's what they're asking for right now, and it will go right to the victims here because people are not able to go home. I know last night a lot of people, they put up in a hotel uh, to make sure that they had a warm bed to sleep at night. Uh, you know, and moving forward, they're really going to try and set them all up and figure out a way to make sure they're all safe. But right now they are asking everyone if you want to donate to everyone here impacted by this, affected by this, uh, cash is really uh, what, they will, what they're looking for. Good information there. Uh, John Diaz reporting for us from our New York station WCBS in the Bronx. John, we thank you very much. You can follow local coverage of this story from CBS in New York. Just download our free CBS News app or visit cbsnews.com. There you will find all of our local streams.